Hear the Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to St. John. Glory be to thee, O Lord. But standing by the cross of Jesus were his mother and his mother's sister Mary, the wife of Clopas, and Mary Magdalene. When Jesus saw his mother and the disciple whom he loved standing nearby, he said to his mother, Woman, behold your son. Then he said to the disciple, Behold your mother. And from that hour the disciple took her to his own home. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. In Matthew, Mark, and Luke's Gospel, Jesus on the cross fulfills scripture. As he does so in St John's Gospel. But in the reading we have just heard, in St John's Gospel, Jesus fulfills scripture, but in St John's Gospel, he does more than that. On the cross, he is still teaching. And therefore, on this Mothering Sunday, we, yes, celebrate human mother and human mothers and mothering, but we do so much more than that. In the church, we transcend just human mothers and mothering. We give it, because of Jesus' teaching, a whole new context. In Roman society, under Roman law, the condemned man has the right to make his last will and testament verbally from the place of execution, even from the cross. And in John's Gospel, this is what we see Jesus doing. His clothing has been removed, uh, his wonderful linen garment taken from him, and as we hear in the other Gospels, it's not torn up. Uh, it's so fine that they cast lots for it. Um, so that's not shed out. It's cast lots and it goes to the one who wins. So he's there crucified. He has nothing else to leave, but he sees an opportunity. I don't think, although we don't know, I don't think he has to put his mother into anybody else's care. We know he has brothers. And in fact, his brother James uh, becomes later on the leader of the Jerusalem church. So I would imagine that James would have looked after uh, his mother Mary um, if Jesus had made no other provision for his mother. But as he is hanging there on the cross, Jesus is still taking responsibility for his disciples. He is still thinking of his teaching ministry, of his responsibility to his disciples, right up until his last breath. He is still the master. He is still the Lord, not only in his sacrificial death, but in his responsibility to his followers, the small group of whom are still standing there, those who are still there and who can hear him. He sees his mother, he sees the beloved disciple. Obviously, he has a care for his mother in a personal level, and we don't know what the relationship between his mother and his brothers were. Uh, in Matthew, Mark and Luke, there's a sense perhaps that his mother and his brothers weren't really on board with Jesus' ministry. Um, we know that they all came at some points during Jesus' ministry, and Jesus, uh, when they come and say, please, can we speak? They come to the throng and they try and get to speak to Jesus. And Jesus dismissively says, who are my mother and my brothers? All of those who do the will of my father, they are my mother and my brothers. And Jesus says, no, they have no more right over me than anybody else. Um, so there's a sense in Matthew, Mark and Luke uh, that perhaps m the mother of Jesus and the brothers of Jesus aren't necessarily uh, on board. Uh, in John's Gospel, that's very different. The brothers aren't on board. It's very clearly stated in John's Gospel that the brothers of Jesus are not on board with Jesus' ministry. They say they're against, they don't believe in him. That's clearly stated. Mary, on the other hand, very definitely believes in her son's mission and ministry. She is the one right at the beginning of the gospel who believes that this is his time and who encourages him. He has disciples. He's already a teaching rabbi, but she believes that this is his hour. And at the wedding of Cana in Galilee, it's her that says, um, do what he tells you. He's she, is, she has been told possibly 
by the Lord, by the Holy Spirit, this is his hour. Um, and she encourages him. She believes in him. Uh, so maybe Jesus from the cross foresees that perhaps she will be more comfortable, more looked after by the disciples who believe because he cannot foresee necessarily what will be the outcome. So he looks um, and cares for his mother and says to woman, he says to his mother, behold your son and son behold your mother. So on one level, he's making provision for his mother to go into the home of someone who, like her, believes in him. He doesn't necessarily know on a human level what's going to happen. He trusts as in his heavenly father, but on a human level, he wants to make provision for his mother. But on a teaching level, he is also still making that provision that he says in Matthew, Mark and Luke, who is my mother and my brothers, those who do the will of my father. And therefore he is making this last great proclamation in his earthly life, in his human earthly life. He's making this last great proclamation. My human family are not the one to whom my human mother belongs. It is still the family of those who do my father's will. My human mother belongs to their care because our human relationships are still really the ones bound up with the faith community. So in his last breath, he is still teaching. He is saying our human relationships, our flesh and blood relationships come second to the faith relationships of the church. And I still think we haven't quite realized that yet. We still haven't realized that the love of the believers should transcend our human relationships. Are we still prepared to love as Christians more than simply to love our flesh and blood? I am not saying, don't please say, the bishop is saying we shouldn't love and take responsibility for those who are our flesh and blood responsibility. But perhaps we should take on board what the Lord tells us, that we should learn how to love our fellow human beings, particularly those of the household of faith. We should learn how to love our fellow human beings in the way that we love those to whom we are biologically or legally related to. All human beings are precious to the God who created us. And therefore, on this Mothering Sunday, we should learn how precious each human being is to their Heavenly Father. And we should ask our Lord and Saviour, Jesus Christ, to give us the glasses of faith, to see every human being is as precious to us as that human being is to the Heavenly Father who created them. Yes, we can't actually help every human being, but let's on this Mothering Sunday ask God to give us the grace to try and help every human being who we are in a position to help. Not be weighed down by the sorrows and pitfalls of the people we aren't in a position to help, because that would actually just slow us down if we were encumbered by the sorrows and weights of the world's sorrows. But let's ask the God of grace to give us the ability to be moved to help those we are in a position to help. And in this diocese, we have the Mother's Union, we have Plant Delwi, we have the charities that are dear to our hearts, we have our public services. Let's, uh, my grandmother apparently used to say, it's a privilege to pay tax. Let's remember the National Health Service doesn't fall out of heaven. We created it through our politics. We put public services together through our politics. Let's put our effort into making our country once more a country where nobody is left behind. Through our individual efforts at local level, through our church efforts, through our politics in Wales and in the United Kingdom, let's try and make our country a place post-Covid, bit by bit, where no one is left behind. And on this Mothering Sunday, let us thank God for those in our families who have looked after us. Let us redouble our efforts to look after those who we can help at hand, but let us also try and make our nation a place where no one goes to bed hungry and where no one goes to bed sad and where we can do what we can uh, to make our families, our villages, our towns and our communities a place where people are well fed, are well looked after and are safe. Amen.